Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in data or more specifically in Excel, but of all the tools within Excel and in the kind of Excel related universe, what tools should you actually be focusing on and what role should Excel VBA uh, play in your Excel practice? Is Excel VBA dead? Over the course of the next 10 minutes, I'm going to share my experiences of consulting to organizations large and small about data problems usually related to Excel. And I'm going to share what I've learned, including the exact toolkit I'm using today to deliver value to our customers here at Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. But if we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. As I said, I'm a real world practicing uh, Excel and data analysis consultant. And if you like what we do here at Tiger, I've got something for you for free right here on YouTube, which is our 30 day Excel analyst complete uh, Excel courses for you your colleagues, your family, your son or daughter, whoever needs an Excel course, 30, 30 minute sessions. The link is in the video description below. Let's get into this one. And is VBA dead? And what should you be focusing on? Now, I've got these beneficiaries of the presentation. Let me know in the comments, which of these categories do you fall into? Are you at the senior management level? And if that's the case, you might be thinking, what blend of skills do I need in my team? Do I need people who know VBA? Do I need people who need to know about SharePoint uh, automation? That could be the challenge that you're dealing with. If you're a mid-career professional, a bit like me, you might be thinking, yeah, I'd like to make a sideways move in my a sideways move, perhaps, in my career, and I want to skill up. I want to learn some new stuff. What should I be learning? What are people actually looking for out there? Perhaps you're early in your career or you're a professional or a student early in their career. What should you be learning as you embark on your career? And perhaps you're some of our hobbyists. We have hobbyists who watch the channel. I've got some more exciting stuff for you to learn coming up. So whichever these categories you fall into, this video could be pivotal in your career. It's worth hanging around for about 10 minutes. So this is our basic idea. If the ladder is not leaning against the right wall, every step we take gets, gets us to the wrong place faster. I love these quotes. And this one you would have heard on the channel if you've been following us for any degree of time. It's better to do the right thing wrong than the wrong thing right. So what is this all about? Well, you might spend a lot of time learning something new in Excel, it might be a formula, it might be Power Query, but then you find the thing I've been learning is not actually helping me with the specific problem that I'm dealing with. This is something I just don't hear many people talking about on YouTube and online. There's many people talking about the latest Excel formula, and I've literally just seen a video come out today from a very big creator with the, with a thumbnail saying this changes everything and it's about new Excel formula. Well, guys, I've got news for you. I've been saying this for 10 years or more. Learning a new Excel formula is not going to fundamentally change the course of your career. It's not going to level up the impact you can have in your work and in organizations. So I'm inviting you to think about this today. What's the right thing to do for you? What's the right thing for you to do in your career? The aim in the next 10 minutes, understand what I'm using as a practicing data analysis consultant, usually consulting around Excel, help you find the tools that are gonna work in your situation, avoid wasting time. Yes, you might not need that new Excel formula. If you're not doing data analysis or modeling, then you probably don't need Excel formula at all. I'm gonna help you build a toolkit that's practical, flexible, and impactful, impactful in today's organizational environment. What's going on out there? In a general sense, what are managers dealing with? What do professionals need? If you can build a toolkit that really meets those needs, you're golden, you're good to go. Let's get you into that position. So features of client situations. As I said, I'm running a small data analysis consultancy. Every year I do between 15 and 20 projects, I'd say, ranging from one person band organizations who are often traders, football traders or currency traders, all the way up to global corporations, household names. These are the range of people that we're consulting to. So I've got a good idea what's going on in the marketplace. I always think of a proper marketplace, you know, like where you've got green grocers selling strawberries and vegetables, two for two pounds, whatever it might be. That's how I visualize it in my head. There's a marketplace out there. 
To what extent can you understand what people are looking for in the marketplace? That person who's going around looking to fill their trolley with some groceries, what are they actually looking for? Right, that's the idea. Let's move on into this one. So what I'm seeing out there is some customers are working on desktop, some customers are working on cloud, maybe both. So this is a feature of the client situation that you've got to understand in order to ensure you're learning the right tools, that you have the right toolkit. Are you working generally in the desktop environment or in the cloud environment? And let me just make some comments here. You know, if you're on LinkedIn or even on YouTube, you might develop the impression there's a dominant narrative that everybody's working in the cloud. Well, I think it's a much more mixed pic picture than that. We have customers who love working on Excel desktop. That opens up the possibilities of using Excel VBA. So don't assume everything's going on in the cloud. It's a much more mixed picture than that. You know, the cloud has been around for what, 15 or more years now? Not everybody's working there. So you've got to identify your customer, your organization. Is it Excel on the desktop or is it Excel online sitting on SharePoint or something like that? And then one, two, three, four. These are the four things I'm looking for in a client situation. There's only four things and 30 Day Excel Analyst, our Excel course is built around these four things, these four applications of Excel. So data input and data management is people want to input data. They want to record data. They also want to cleanse data. Anything to do with data and input and management, that's one bundle of tools. Data analysis, you know, we've got a data set. We want to understand what on earth the messages are in this data. We want to build charts and dashboards. That's data analysis. Modeling is we want to create a formula chain to express some kind of real world situation. For example, a simple budget model. We want to calculate our company budget, understand are we over or under budget. That's an example of modeling. Then finally, automation. Automation is we're doing manual tasks. I'm spending three hours on a Sunday afternoon collating these Excel files. I don't want to be doing that. I would like to automate this task. Almost always involves moving data around files. Could be on the desktop, could be in the cloud. So it's those four applications, data input and management, data analysis, modeling and automation. If you can understand those, Forget the new Excel formula, guys. If you can understand those four applications and you can identify them in the real world and you have tools to respond to each one, you are good to go. Finally, data set size. If you're dealing with millions of rows, you should be moving away probably from the Excel universe anyway. And the amount of files, the amount of files the customer's working with, that's just something else for us to note down. That's an important feature of a client situation. So. If you've been able to understand that, do what I call problem structuring, identify the main features of the situation, then you can start building a toolkit. We're in the marketplace. We're hearing what people are asking for, what they're looking for in the marketplace. Now we can serve those customers. So this is my toolkit. This is what I'm using. Me and my team are using here at Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions this year. Firstly, Power Automate. This is a new addition, a new addition to our toolkit in the past couple of years. So we've spoken about automation, moving data around files, something managers and professionals like you want to do all the time. Yes, in the old days, we could say, download all the files to the desktop, do it in Excel VBA. More people working in the cloud on SharePoint these days. So what do you do? The automation tool in SharePoint is Power Automate. This is the one we use anyway. This is the one that I would recommend. So if you're looking to do those VBA type jobs, moving data between files, for example, on the cloud, Power Automate, I recommend. I've got it into it. The past couple of years, I'm no expert, but I have enjoyed learning this. We've got a beginner video. You can see a little uh, clip from the video here, a little thumbnail from the video anyway. You can see it here. The link is in the video description below. So for me, Power Automate has to be in your toolkit for automating processes that are in the cloud or on SharePoint. So we're talking about being in the cloud and SharePoint land at the moment, Office Script, Office Script. So yes, if we're in the cloud, we don't have access to Excel VBA. Does that mean that Excel VBA is dead? Hmm, I'm not sure, hang around. You're gonna have my hot take on that too. Office Script is we wanna do something within a workbook online. We want to write a short program like a macro, e execute it. It's going to do something in the file, move some data around, delete some columns. Who knows what it might do? Anything that you could do with a macro, you could pretty much do with Office Script with one 
major limitation, and it is a major limitation. The scope of Office Script is the Excel file. So we can't do things outside of the particular file you're working in with Office Script. The scope is the file itself. So this is a serious drawback, certainly as compared to Excel VBA, where we can go and interact with multiple files at the same time. It's absolutely no problem. So you have to combine together Office Script and Power Automate, combine the two together. That allows you to come somewhere near the power of Excel VBA in that cloud environment. So we don't have the beginner video yet. The beginner video on Office Script is coming. I'm going to teach it specifically from a as a conversion course from Excel VBA. That's how I've done it over the past couple of years. So in your toolkit, I think you need Office Scripts. Thirdly, trigger warning here, you've got to have VBA. You've got to have VBA in your toolkit. As I said, I'm out there in the marketplace every day talking to people. There's many people who still do stuff on the desktop, in desktop Excel. Might be a surprise to some people out there, but Excel VBA, nothing really matches the power of Excel VBA. Yes, we've got lots of cool stuff, Power Automate and things like that, but you have to combine together tool, two tools, Power Automate and Office Script, to do what VBA would do quite easily on the desktop. So generally, I'm encouraging our customers to, to consider the cloud-based solution. There's many kind of natural advantages to working in the cloud, but some of our customers push back and they say, no, we like the VBA-based solution. We like the slickness, the power, the click of a button functionality that VBA gives us. And we're happy to work on a desktop. You know, you've got to choose your struggle. None of these tools are perfect. If you're doing Office Script and Power Automate, you better have a good internet connection, for example. You're going to have problems with permissions on SharePoint. What do, what do you want your struggle to be? If you have a manager, could be you, someone on your team, who can kind of supervise a file and check that a file doesn't get duplicated and is in the right place on the desktop and can run it off the desktop, you can still enjoy all of the powers of Excel VBA that we've covered a huge amount of times on the channel. The beginner VBA video is available primarily to do with process automation on desktop Excel. There's absolutely still a place for VBA in your toolkit. So the fourth item in my toolkit is Power Query. This is something I've integrated more and more over the past four or five years, I would say. So this is particularly where we're doing some kind of automation or data management. We want to bring together data from multiple sources, from multiple files into a single file so we can do some analysis, we can run a process, we can create a dashboard, whatever you might want to do. And Power Query allows us when we're doing that collation to do some cool things to the data, to transform it, to sort it, to deduplicate it, to put an extra column on the end. It's a pretty cool tool, Power Query. So if you're doing that data management, you're bringing data sets together, I would highly recommend learning Power Query. It should be part of your data set. Let's quickly discuss its role versus VBA. Yes, you could do in VBA what you do in Power Query, but it is a bit easier in Power Query. Never thought I'd say that, hey. It's a bit easier in Power Query. There's a nice interface. We can see all the options there. You don't have to write the code yourself. So Power Query, I would recommend it. It's part of my toolkit and our toolkit here at Tiger. I would recommend it for the modern professional. Finally, fifth part of my toolkit, basic Excel skills. Now, these are built around the four applications of Excel, data management, uh, modeling, uh, data analysis, and automation. I won't go into these now, but you need a basic Excel toolkit. You can you can go and, go and just watch the first session. Watch the first session from our course. It'll be 30 minutes well spent. It introduces you to the toolkit, the Excel toolkit that I actually use here. And surprise, surprise, <laughs> It's not all about new Excel formula, guys. And just as a parting note here, if you like, I'd invite you to think about people's perspectives, people's motivations. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm in the content creation world. I love getting views, but it's an easy way to get views is to do a video about the latest Excel formula. There's a new Excel formula coming out. I've literally just seen on YouTube today, a big creator has created a video saying, this changes everything. In my opinion, a new Excel formula, guys, it's not going to change everything. It's going to give you a punch the air moment. We love those punch the air moments in Excel. Is it going to fundamentally change your career? Is it going to get you to a position where you're not struggling every day doing those manual jobs? 
No, it's not. So my motivation is to bring to you the insights I'm getting together every day from the marketplace, talking to professionals, dealing with these problems every day. This is the view that I've got. This is the toolkit that I'm using. And I recommend you learn to. We've got the videos uh, right here on the channel in the video description below if you want to get started. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm going to book it with my therapist, discuss all this with her. The next video to watch is right here.